Here at JTA, we've been really interested in Kumiko and Shoji for some time. This is a really beautiful aspect of Japanese woodworking. However, there is a part of the Kumiko and Shoji craft that we haven't really engaged in up till now, which is the paper that is used with it. So today, we finally have in the shop a selection of washi, papers that can be used with screens and for many other uses as well. And I'm gonna take you through a few of the things that makes washi a little bit special and what differentiates one piece of washi from another. In the West, washi is often referred to as rice paper. If you want rice paper, I suggest you buy yourself a Vietnamese roll because rice has no place in washi. Traditional washi is made from the bark of the mulberry tree, also known as kozo in Japanese. And depending on the process used to extract that kozo and where that kozo has come from, you, washi can vary greatly in price. All of the washi that we sell here at JTA has been made in the small town of Ogawa, which is in Saitama Prefecture, northwest of Tokyo. The paper making tradition in Ogawa can trace it back, itself back to the 8th century, so the craftsmen in Ogawa certainly know a thing or two about washi. The process of making washi has a lot to do with the harvesting and processing of the kozo, the mulberry tree, which it's based on. That tree is harvested once a year in late autumn and is then cut to length, steamed, debarked, and once the bark is removed from the branches, the bark can be hung to dry and stored for later. Once the uh, craftsman is ready to use that bark, that bark can be rehydrated. The outer bark needs to be scraped off because the outer bark is not used in the process. Only the inner and middle bark is used, which can then be separated or incorporated depending on the quality of washi that you're looking to make. Uh, and then that needs to be boiled with soda ash. Once that's been boiled with soda ash, uh, it also needs to be incorporated with a substance called neri, which is found in the roots of the sunset hibiscus. The neri allows the washi material to suspend itself evenly across, across the bamboo rack that the paper's made on. Only at this point are you ready to make washi, and you can make your decisions about the thickness of the washi, the weight, and what other elements you incorporate it finally at the end of that process. Washi that is made with 100% kozo that is harvested, milled, and refined in, in Japan is considered of the highest grade. That is for a few reasons. That is because in Japan, once that uh, mulberry has been harvested in the late autumn, it will grow very little over the winter and really only grows in the spring and summer. So during those months, you have very little growth, you have very tight fibers, and you have a very low yield. It also needs to be processed in Japan. It is also possible to grow, harvest, and process kozo, mulberry, in Thailand and China. And so some washi incorporates either a percentage or is 100% made from kozo from those countries. In those countries that are more tropical climates, you can have uh, kozo that grows year round, which gives you a larger fiber and a higher yield, and also sometimes a lower labor cost in refining it. If you have large shoji that you need paper for, or you're looking to put screens in an uh, internal area with high traffic, you might want to consider the washi rolls. These are a 30 meter continuous roll, and they are actually a wood pulp washi rather than a bark washi. Uh, and they are a very neutral and quite stark white. When they're lit from behind, they give that quite traditional crisp shoji look. And when lit from the front, they're totally opaque and a, and a quite stark screen. They're a really good way of getting uh, some fairly tough, and that's a relative term, uh, fairly tough shoji paper uh, at a good price over a large area. If you would like a bit more visual interest or variety in your washing and you might not be doing such a large area, you can also look at a paper that incorporates some natural elements into it. This piece here incorporates safflower petals and they are distributed randomly throughout the paper. This means that when it's lit from behind, you get these beautiful silhouettes of flowers and then when we lit from the front, you get this nice yellow, golden, crisp little flower coming through. And flowers are just the start of what could be added to washi. For example, you have a, a washi named Chidi Washi, which incorporates bark through the piece. This is a very, uh, again, white piece of washi that's been bleached and it's had the outer layers of mulberry bark incorporated through it. This gives a quite a nice neutral tone to the pattern. Uh, and, be, and again, it's very, very random uh, and really, really pleasing to the eye. Nicely lit from the back, gives you a nice pattern. And from the front, it's a, quite a stark white with little brown chips that break up the silhouette. So far, we've looked at washi that has all been bleached. However, you can also get unbleached washi. So this washi has that creamy, nutty color to it, 
uh, which is less dark and less crisp than the bleach washi and it can still have elements scattered through it. So this piece here has chiri, has the bark, the mulberry bark in larger sizes than the previous pattern and also has fibres distributed through, uh, throughout the pattern. This gives a really interesting look because you have these fibrous tendrils all through the piece. When it's lit from behind that gives a really random uh, rippled effect. That effect is called unryu, so when you see anything referred to as unryu washi, you can expect to see these long fibres all through the piece. This is an example of unryu paper that has been bleached and is quite white. So you have this interesting intersection of random threads and fibres all through the paper, but still that crisp white look. While we're talking about chopped strand washi, we also have this really interesting paper that is called art paper. It's not really a washi and it's not really intended for screen work. However, if you want a very heavily opaque pattern on a screen, it might, might be something you want to consider. And I think I'll be using this as an insert into drawer and box bottoms instead of felt because it's a very uh, tactile paper, feels really nice, looks really nice and has this really natural earthy feel to it. We've got that available in a number of colours. Finally, you have papers that use the rakusui technique. Rakusui papers have been sprayed with water while they were on the rack and they clearly show these droplet formations which are really random, beautiful and give a really heavy variation between light and dark areas in the paper. This particular piece is a white bleach washi with rakusui. And we also have a piece of washi that has the rakusui technique as well as unryu strands all through it. These rakusui droplets are much larger and heavy, which also gives a really different feel and actually results in some small holes through the paper. This piece uses the unryu technique on unbleached washi and the strands that are distributed throughout the paper are also a different colour to the, to the paper beneath. So you get this variation when you look at it while it's unlit as well as when it's lit. So that is a bit of a whirlwind tour through our first experience with the world of washi and being such an ancient craft there is a huge amount that I have to learn about it but I'm very excited to start playing around with some of these sheets. The thing that we need to learn more about is the rice glue. I'm going to enjoy making a lot of rice over the weekend. Uh, however there are many good resources and books on shoji making and paper fitting. So we'll leave you with that. I hope you're enjoying your woodwork and I hope you enjoy your washi.